Welcome back to today's project. A uh, little different. I'm not going to be working on this thing today. I'm going to be working on this thing today. So, what I have planned is... So this is for all you uh, third gen forerunner people. What I'm going to do is... So, first off, I'll tell you what I have. The uh, front springs are Old Man Emu on Bill Scene 5100s. The rears are Toy Tech rear springs with the 5100s also. Um, what I need to do is, we're gonna swap out the Freedom. These are good, but I did get a set of SPC upper control arms. So I gotta change those out. It's a three inch lift with a one inch body lift. I didn't want to go anything bigger than a one inch. Um, the vehicle is not for off-roading, not, nothing serious. It's just meant for, how many meant? I, it's mostly meant for running on the sand and going on small trails. So today, where is it, where is it? This is what we're gonna be doing. I've had these for a long time, so long that it's kind of developing some rust. But I'm going to pull out the spindles, take it to my friend, and uh, they're going to weld up everything. So let's get on that. So this is one of those things that you do while you're in here. So I'm gonna take off the brake caliper, undo the sway bar, undo the outer steering tie rod. Uh, what I'm gonna do is change the outer tie rod and the inner tie rod, and that's pretty simple. You just uh, unbolt it. Take off the spindle. Then we're gonna take the spindle down to uh, D's Automotive. And I'll let you guys check out Daryl's shop when we get there. He's going to do all the fabrication and welding for the gussets. And that should solve the problem of any flex and potential breakages. All right. One more thing. Here's a good example of a, not broken or failed, but not so tight um, inner ball joint. Lift it up and... Do So that's one of the reasons I want to change the inner. And I'm going to go with the factory Toyota parts. I mean, just because it it's not worth it to buy the aftermarket, save some money, and have the thing fail in a couple years. Um, this way, at least once I change this with the factory stuff, I'm hopefully, I won't have to worry about it for another 10, 20 years. These are original from 98. And yeah, it's been over 20 years for the original ones. All right. Let's get going on the rest. And the spindle's off. It was pretty easy. Just the four bolts on the bottom. Undo the tie rod end. Uh, the brake lines that was connected to there. Two 17 millimeter for the brake caliper. And your stock one's gonna have a stock um, upper control arm. This is a Freedom. I'm changing this one out to the SPC. Now we'll take a trip down to Daryl and uh, he's gonna do all the welding, preheat the spindle to whatever temperature it needs to and take care of all the welding for me. All right, let's go check out Daryl. All right, here we are at uh, Daryl's place. They're working on a bunch of trucks, working on a dually. Daryl can pretty much do everything, any custom fabrications you need. Um, he did my second gen uh, Dodge Ram with a 15 inch four link uh, suspension. We're gonna drop off the gussets. Uh, we just did drop off the gussets in fact and he's gonna take care of those and call me when it's ready. All right, and then we'll get back on putting everything back together. And we are back home from dropping off the spindles at Daryl. So if you guys need any custom fabrication, uh, lift kits installed, any kind of unbelievable uh, welding tubular work, like I said, any kind of custom fabrication, Daryl's the guy to check out. I'm gonna pick, the, pick up the uh, spindles from him, I don't know, maybe tomorrow or something when I got time. 
Now that I'm back home, here's what I did so far. So I need us to stop off at um, Home Depot to get a 27 millimeter, 30 millimeter, and a, an adjustable wrench. I'm gonna cut off the band clamp, squeeze off this clamp, and change the inner and outer tie rod ends. Uh, see, I could use a pipe wrench. I have a big old pipe wrench and you know, that's very unprofessional and I'm just tired of doing things so monkey, half whatever, you know, way. So the wrenches are gonna hold the inner portion. Then I'm gonna crank it off. I'm getting a little older, so I figured ah, I might as well do things the right way for a change. Um, yeah, let's get to it. And then I'm gonna also install the uh, SPC upper control arms. Those are a no-brainer. Um, I could have went with Uniball, but I didn't want to. This truck doesn't really see real major off-roading situations. This truck only sees fire trails and going to a beach, running on a sand. And well, like I said, the Forerunner is two-wheel drive, not four-wheel drive. Two-wheel drive, sitting on 33 by 12, 18s, manual transmission, Four cylinder, woohoo! Four cylinder. This thing is unbelievable on gas. The gas mileage is crazy. Clean interior, manual trans. Um, I do have the only other alterations I did was a set of 488 gears. So this thing will pull like crazy now, especially with the manual transmission. Okay, so I'm gonna change out these tie rod ends and check you guys out in a little bit. One more thing, I specifically went to Home Depot for these cheap tools for a very good reason. Uh, okay, I'm gonna pound off that little retainer. Uh, it won't fit. So anyway, um, the reason is that, well, it's the inner one, my bad, sorry. So this will, it won't fit because it's too fat. It's a 27 millimeter. Um, what you need to do is take your grinder and just shave this down about a 16th to maybe an eighth of an inch. Yeah, see, so it'll, it'll go on, but not all the way. And you just have to grind off a very, very little. Like I said, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. I'm just gonna grind it off. And at least I can keep this tool forever. My bad earlier, I said 27, but it is a 30 millimeter. Uh, Home Depot special, yeah. Let's get on with the rest. And that's how it comes off. And then we just put the new one on and we are good to go. Wasn't too bad. All right, let's do the other side. Let's see. So what I did for mine, uh, I used the mood for the inner ones. And then the other ones I used the factory uh, Toyota. And that's just because the dealership did not have the inner ones in and I wanted this done today. So I measured the threads. The original one uh, was showing five eighths of an inch. And there you go. It was showing about roughly five eighths. So I transferred the five eighths onto the new one. And hopefully that'll get me in a somewhat drivable condition. So now we're gonna put everything back together. Uh, new washer, the tabs go all to the inner part like that. And then we screw this back on. So let's finish this up. Just wanted to share this one little part with you guys. So this is the new ones, right? 
Look at that, I'm flying this thing. Doesn't even move, right? There's the factory one. <laughs> but what do you expect for 20 years, right? So uh, the inner ones, I went, with, I went with Moog. Here's the part number on there. And uh, the outer ball joints I went with factory OEM ones. All right, just want to share that with you guys. Good news. So I'll digging through all my junks and all my junks back here. And I found this. So I'm gonna swap out the factory sway bar bushings for these guys, some energy suspension ones. Oh, it's still sealed. I can't even open it. Ah. All right, I'm gonna have to cut this thing open, but yeah, so. <laughs> score for me Ooh. and I didn't want to go with the red I guess for whatever reason years ago I decided to go, to go with the black ones so I'm going to have some brand new sway bar end links from energy suspension I think this was just a universal um, kit let's see what's the part number I'm pretty sure they'll fit right diameter, inner, outer so score okay and here we are guys we are back at daryl's shop uh he used to own dh built he moved to the mainland and then now he's back so daryl is located in eva um within the ec trucking company he's renting a space in here and like i said daryl will do everything all your custom fabrications your body lifts your uh, regular suspension lifts, custom welding, uh, tube frames. He does everything. So let's go and pick up the spindles and get this day going. And where are they? Uh, looks like he just finished with the dually. All right, so let me grab my spindles and let's get back home. And here we are back home. So let's check out what we're gonna do. Not bad, pretty nice. Welded all the way through, front and back. Ugh, this thing is heavy. So I'm gonna, first I'll grind these guys down. And then, uh, paint it. Okay, so just got through grinding everything down here. Let me show you. Uh, grinded it down a little. Sorry, I'm trying to hold everything with one hand. And then we're going to paint it with some of this stuff. Uh, I don't know if it'll come out. Yeah, so we're going to paint it with some Rust-Oleum oil base. Um, the reason I'm using oil base is oil base takes longer to dry oil base stinks really bad has a harsh chemical smell but the oil base will give it a super hard shell like a super hard shell and i've used it before on um, many frames uh front ends rear ends straight axles leaf springs that oil base rustoleum is really good it's solid when it dries so paint those up and then um Put everything back together, take it to the alignment shop, and that'll solve the problem that I had with those uh, ball joints, the inners and outers that we changed. All right, I can't really see it here, but the, um, the dealership did not have the inner ones, so I had to use Moog. Uh, the outer ones are, in fact, the um, factory ones, so yeah. And next, Let's check out the, uh, put this all together. Check out the alignment shop. All right. Here we are, all painted. Two coats, and this thing is hard like a rock. It's a nice shell. All right, time to get these guys in. Welcome back, and now we're gonna put the uh, spindles back on. I actually did wait 
approximately two days. And the reason for that here, I'll show you. I wanted these spindles to harden up. And I used the oil base paint on these things. Uh, they're kind of glossy and extremely hard shell. If you've ever gone to Lowe's, Home Depot, um, and you see those yellow bollards in the front, those are painted with oil-based paint. It takes forever to dry, it smells horrible, but when it hardens, it hardens into a nice hard shell. And I'll probably do the frame a little later on, but time to get everything back together because it's been too long since I haven't dried this, dry, drove in, driven the Forerunner. All right. One more thing before I forget, the uh, top, we need to press in um, these guys. And this is for the SPC. It's gonna go this way from underneath and come up like that. And they're real easy. You just whack them in with a little hammer and then it's held in with a uh, C-clip. These guys. So I'll put these in and then we'll get the spindles finally in. All right, so the only thing that we need to do differently is this guy. This would normally clamp on and get bolted together. I'm gonna take it off and just probably zip tie it in the back and call it a day uh, for this piece at least. All right, time to do the next side and then torque everything down. And here is the finished product. All right, so everything is torqued down. Um, I don't want to be liable for any false information. So check online. All the torque specs are online for um, the top nut, the lower uh, bolt, and your tie rod ends and the four nuts underneath. So, we just have to make it to the uh, alignment shop and I think we are good from here. So that covers this part. And we are here at the alignment shop. It's pretty noisy. I don't know if you guys can hear me well, but now it's time to align the forearm. I'll show you why I'm doing this. So, here we have just a regular Tacoma small lift. As you can see, the control arms are bent down, like chicken wing. I'm not just kidding. Anyways, bent down. You lose downward movement on articulation. Now, with the SPC arms, it's flat or flatter. And I have the option to move the wheel forward, backwards, in, out, caster camber, and all that. So, um, what I did for this truck was I went with, went with the Old Man Emu shocks and no, I mean the Old Man Emu springs, sorry, I forgot what ratings these springs were and the uh, Bill C 5100s and I did put a spacer, uh, one inch, no, three quarter inch spacer. Now the reason I did that was the spring is set all the way to the lowest setting. By putting the spring on the lowest setting, what that's gonna do is give me a softer ride. It's gonna allow the shock to have full travel, full movement. It's gonna utilize the shock better, giving you a better feel of the road, uh, better shock travel off-road. To put 
put the spring on a higher setting is not the right thing to do. They're putting extra preload on the spring. It's gonna rebound the spring even harder when you uh, travel through the, when it cycles through its suspension travel. It's really not the smart thing to do to preload the spring. Um, the correct way actually is to get a coil over with the right pound spring. So you'll see 400, 600, 700. What that means is that for every 400 pounds, it'll move that spring one inch. For every 600 pounds, it'll move that spring one inch. Now, there are some external reservoirs, shocks. Uh, there's a bunch of companies out there. Kings are really good. You can control high speed, low speed settings. You can control compression, you can control rebound, but you are gonna spend a lot of money, a couple thousand dollars per shock. It is what it is, right? That's what you get when you have a high quality product like that. So happy medium for me was the Bilsing 5100s. This truck does not go full off-roading. Like I said, it only goes to the beach once in a while. And that's the reason that I chose those. And it gives me the option to upgrade later, which I highly doubt that I'm gonna do. Okay, so once we get this thing aligned, we'll check it out and I'll see how well the steering is. I'll take it for a quick little spin off-road. Not really off-road, but I'll go down to the beach and uh, play around in the sand a little bit. Now remember, this is only a two-wheel drive, not a four-wheel drive. So I don't care what I do to this truck, you know? I mean, I do care, but it's only a two-wheel drive. It's not gonna do all the things that a four-wheel drive truck will do. With that being said, it's mostly just a street truck, uh, hopping curbs, going to the beach, like I said. And, okay, Scotty is ready. So if you're on the island of Oahu, there's so many different alignment shops. I have been going to Scotty's for the past 15 years. He does all my lifted trucks, lower trucks. Uh, he does uh, everything, exotics, Porsches, Lamborghinis, Ferraris. He's worked on my GTR many times. So let's get this thing going and uh, finish up this review. All right. And I'm back home from getting the alignment done everything works great the truck steers straight um practically no bump steer i did change the inner and outer tie rods i did put the gussets on the spindle so this video contains pretty much all of that um here let me just see if i can uh, turn this around the control arms are i mean i don't know if it's easy to tell from this but it is pretty level so now i have full range of motion full artic articulation and the total chaos gussets came out pretty good. I did, however, paint them. Uh, I don't know if we can see from there. I did grind it on and paint it a little. So this should give me a lot of strength. Especially here, our roads are horrible. Absolutely horrible. Um, a lot of potholes. One of my friends, Fred, he's blown through, I think, two or three knuckles. As soon as he hit a, a pothole, giant pothole here, shatters um and a lot of guys will probably tell you that who do have lifted third gen forerunners maybe even tacomas but this came out good so yeah um hope you guys like the rest of the videos that i've been making and this is just to help those that want to know how to do something or get inspired to do uh, their own projects see you guys on the next one